This is Jessie. She is a stay-at-home mom who's made over a million dollars revenue on Etsy during what I like to call the nap time hustle. I plan to make at least 300,000 just in October, November, December, or even up to 400,000, 500,000. In today's interview, we go over how Jessie has been able to grow her Etsy business to over a million dollars all while only working 15 hours per week. So with that, let's jump right into the interview. Hey, Jessie, how's it going? Thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, Steven, thanks for having me on your channel. Yeah, I'm super excited for our interview. To give a little bit of context for everyone watching, I just got done uh, recording our Amazon print on demand course with co coach Jesse from Inner Circle Prints. We were in the studio, we were recording, and he was telling me about this rock star seller who was doing seven figures and how she's only working 15 hours per week. And as someone who works well over that, who overworks admittedly, was like, I have to meet her, I have to get her on this channel, and we have to dissect exactly what she does on a week to week basis. So that we, who a lot of people have full-time jobs and family commitments, can also try to work 15 hours a week to find that success. So I'm super excited to kind of dive into this interview. So to kind of give a little bit of context and kind of the backstory, Jesse, would you mind sharing a little bit about who you are, what you do, and maybe some of the success you've had with your Etsy business? Yeah, definitely. So I've got two little girls. One is two and one is three. So I was pregnant with my first daughter when I started Print On Demand in 2020. Um, so I started doing hand painted signs. Well, let me backtrack. It was COVID. And so I, we were uncertain with the whole pregnancy thing, what was going to happen. So I quit my job. I wanted to make some money from home and I'm, I have an art degree. So I wanted to do something a little bit crafty. So I started an Etsy shop, started making hand painted signs, not super scalable. And in 2020, I made $5,000. This is after I found the life hacker couple videos on YouTube and I couldn't sleep that night. Just the business potential. I hadn't heard of anything apart from an hourly wage before. So 2020, I made 5k just learning about print on demand. I had my first child. 2021, I was following the life hacker couple group and I made 49,000 in revenue that year. 2022, I learned about Cassie and I got into her mentorship group because they actually interviewed her on their channel. So I started following her YouTube channel and I got in her mentorship group and learned a ton from her, made $122,000 in revenue that year. And all of this is shirts this whole time, plus sweatshirts. Cassie got me doing sweatshirts. And then 2023, I learned about Jesse, signed up for Elite POD, his course, and I started an inner circle print shop and together my two shops made for 25. Uh, and then wow. this year I've made 300,000 so far. Um, but yeah, I should, I should hit 700,000 by the end of this year in revenue. Come on. That is like such a motivational story to hear. Like I do also think that the life hacker couples were like the birth of print on demand for Etsy. Like I also saw that video on YouTube, like this, like this husband and wife in the kitchen, the crying baby in the background telling you about this opportunity. And I was like, what the heck is print on demand? Because at the same time, I thought if you had an Etsy business, you had to be handmade. And that kind of like showed like, hey, you can actually do print on demand where you outsource the mm -hmm. production. And what I love about your story too, is it's like you were consistent. Like we talked about like this year, you doubled, you doubled, you quadrupled, and now you're about to hit 700K in a one turnaround year. Um, I love that. I love that story. And it loves, um, what I, what I love most about it too, is like, we're about to go into Q4. So I'm super excited. I always like to say that like, if you're in print on demand, there's actually two seasons of the year, there's Q4 and there's not Q4. And if you're not in Q4, <laughs> we're preparing for Q4. Right. So like, I know like, like, like I always, I would do about 50 to 70% of my yearly revenue in just like probably the 50 days before Christmas. Like that is how big this season is that we're upcoming. And I think you're saying like, you've done like a little over 300 now, but you're, you're predicting 700 for the year are you able to kind of break down like what you think the next three months what q4 is going to look like for your business specifically yeah so each year it's proven true like what you said i make about i make more than 50 percent of what i made the no that's not right i'm sorry no so i make i made three hundred thousand so far this year and i plan to make at least three hundred thousand just in october november december or even up to 400,000, 500,000. So yeah, it's the same for me. Dude, I love that back-to-back -back six figure months, 
all while only working 15 hours per week. I'd love to dissect what you do on a weekly basis to grow a seven figure business while working 15 hours per week. Like what does a normal week look like for you? Yeah. So my mom watches my girls or my daughters for two days a week. She watches them five hours each time. So I have 10 dedicated hours that I can work on my business. And then I do nap times and after bedtime, I will, I'll get some hours in here and some hours in there, but I, I plan out what I'm doing. So I know like right now I'm working on ornaments. I know that I need to make 10 designs and then I know I have to do the research for the SEO. I have to get the mock-ups. I have to get them listed. So there's no question on what I'm going to be working on the next time that I have a chunk of time. Yeah, I, I call that nap time hustle. So essentially, like, if you have a set amount of time where you have to get a project done, it almost forces you to work on like productive work versus busy work. Like I could work, spend all day just answering emails, but like, does that move the needle versus mm -hmm. like, you know, getting the mock-ups done, getting the listings live, like that's what is going to be needed to move the needle going into Q4. And also like there's, there's something with like giving yourself a deadline. Like I like to give the example that if I tell my five-year-old son, like you have until I get home to clean your room. His room will be clean when I get home eight hours from now, but he's probably going to wait until seven and a half hours to start. But if I say like, Hey, you have five minutes to clean that room. It'll be clean in five minutes. Right? So if you give yourself, Hey, the kids will probably sleep, let's say 30 minutes or, you know, they're going down for the night. Like you give yourself a deadline, you have the task. It almost forces you to be more productive with a set outcome. And then something tends to happen where like you tend to get those goals met and you can do a lot more with less. So I know a lot of people who, um, you know, are watching this, like they still have full-time jobs. They still have a full-time play, you know, their bandwidth is probably this big Again, going into Q4 where we should put, be putting a lot of focus in on our business right now to be able to have that big income, that big impact coming you know, literally next month. Do you have any advice for anyone who just, again, has a full-time schedule who wants to grow their business again, to the levels that you have with the time that you've given it? Yeah, so I would I would tell them you don't want to do anything sporadically. Like don't just throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. You have to have a plan. Like you do the research, you do the mock-ups, you do the designs. You know exactly what you're going to be listing. You need to know what you're doing next. So make sure that you have your plans laid out. Even if your days maybe you don't get so much done in a day or in a week, but you know exactly what you're going to do next. And then I would say Focus on one product at a time. I've seen a lot of people try to do multiple products at a time and they don't do any of them well. So if you can focus on one and build it out fully, then you're going to win with that. And then I would say have grace for yourself when you feel like you're not getting enough accomplished because I always feel like that. Like I'm at this point of success now and I still go to sleep feeling like I haven't done enough that day. So just fight that when you feel it and celebrate the wins that you do get. I like this proverb. I say it in my head a lot. Drop by drop, a river is formed. I use that to just encourage myself. Every little thing that I do is building this robust machine of a print on demand business. Yeah, I think out of all of the everything we've gone over in the interview so far, if anyone just listens to those like three points right there, that right there is like the gold nugget. That is the value of this interview. And I could not agree more that like once you have a system and a process, you just you just go through the system. Like like once I realized like how to do the product research, the market research, the listing templates, the launch strategy, like, like those four steps, I would just go through those same four steps, whether I was launching, you know, a dog dog collars, ornaments, picture frames. And I was able to be significantly faster at launching the next product. And then same thing, being really focused at one product type at a time, that like your design attributes, your listing templates, everything that you're building out for that one product type, it doesn't make sense to just redo that all over again for a different product type, redo it all over again for a different product type, and then just start launching random products. But like leverage the time that you spent, you spent doing it one time, and then just build it out entirely. It's going to be more productive with your time. And again, I completely agree. Like there's this, this other quote, it was like, you, un, you overestimate what you can do in a day, but you <laughs> underestimate what you can do in a year. Like I, I like when we launched other customers, like all these big envisions, I was like, oh man, I didn't hit any of them. But if I look back a year from now, I was like, wow, we actually built a lot, mm -hmm. you know? So like, again, success does take time. This is not an overnight success. This is not a get rich quick scheme, you know, but it, like if you put in the time, you are consistent each single day, you're putting a little bit more into your business, you know, a year from now, you're going to have a business where it's like, you can put in 15 hours per week and have those systems, those automations to just grow and maintain what you've built. Um, again, going into Q4, 
again, this is a time where again, like a lot of people are prepping, they're looking for direction or like, again, like how can we take the most out of this time that comes once per year that is like bigger than all of the other months combined. Uh, I really want to kind of ask you, cause like, again, before this call, I, we were talking about how like, you are now a coach, like people can actually talk to you directly uh, with inner circle prints. Like if anyone is watching this and want to learn from Jesse specifically, like you are now coaching people uh, through mm -hmm. inner circle prints. Like what does that look like? How's it going? And what has it been your experience so far? Yeah, it's, it's such a blessing to be a coach with ICP. It kind of came out of the blue. I wasn't expecting Jesse to talk to me about that, but it's what I'm passionate about. It's helping women be able to stay home with their, their kids and be able to make money from home. So I have multiple women that I'm working with now, some single moms, some women don't have kids, but they're all trying to create freedom for their families and for themselves. And I just love how proven Jesse's method is. It's research-based. And we really just have to lock in on, okay, have you built out your master list in its entirety? Check back with them on that. Make sure everything is crossed off. Make sure that their, their mock-ups are good. I'm, I have a strength in design, so I like to come alongside them with the design and give them critiques or give them suggestions for what they could do to make it look better. And then even when they're launching their products, um, we'll share docs in Canva and then I can give them suggestions on what they could do with their designs to make them better. Um, but yeah, I'm, I love, I love this new position and I love the women that I'm working with. Yeah, I totally love that. If anyone is interested in Inner Circle Prince, again, Inner Circle Prince is a company that my good friend, Jesse Anselm, the one that got me started with Etsy uh, and personalization uh, has a program. I think he is open for a little bit longer going into Q4. So if you're interested in Inner Circle Prince or even working with Jesse, I'll put links in the description below where you can apply and sign up. Jesse, thank you so much for your time. Do you have any final thoughts or advice you'd like to say? Yeah, I have a couple of things. I, so I would just say when you're feeling like you're, you're not doing enough, just take a step back and just take an assessment of how far you've come and be proud of yourself for that. Also, I, I would find myself being short with my kids whenever I didn't have boundaries in place for my work times. So make sure that you have those boundaries in place. And when it's, this is work time and then this is not work time so that you don't see them as a distraction because they're real, they're a blessing that you're supposed to be stewarding. And we don't, we just want to, we want to have good connections with our kids. That's why we're doing this. I would also say, I think a lot of women struggle with being people pleasers we have to learn that we can't be people pleasers. Like if someone messages you and asks for a custom design that you can't put on your shop, you need to be okay with saying no to them. Uh, so learn that because that's a respect for yourself too in your time. Um, with utilize Hello Custom if you can. I am, I'm getting all of my best sellers on there now because I was paying my VA 50 cents per edit so when they would have 100 edits in a day, I'm paying them $50 and I get it listed on Hello Custom and it's just like, okay, approve, 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 approve. And it automatically gets sent to Printify. So now I'm saving all of that money. So if you're selling things, you need to get them on Hello Custom, selling things that are personalized. That will help you out a lot. Um, specifically for the moms, I would say with your house, just be okay with the mess as much as you can because some this is really cheesy but someday the mess is not going to be there and then you're going to miss it and i'm, I'm going to tear up saying that but i try to remind myself of that and then um just know yourself like if you're going to feel better if the laundry and the dishes are done then just get those two things accomplished you're going to feel a lot better about your house also don't be afraid to ask for help don't feel like you're invincible. Uh, we need as much support as much support as we can get. We don't need to just act like these strong people that don't need help. Um, just know that you're not going to get it right all of the time, too. You you need to have grace for yourself. You're not you know you're not going to get everything accomplished that you thought you wanted to get accomplished, and that's okay because you're still making the progress. I think we can make a ton of money in this business model because it's endless. You can just keep listing, keep making money. It's so vast, but if our kids don't feel seen or heard and we don't have a connection with them, then we are like, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it. So just make sure that you have your priorities in order. 
Yeah, I could not agree more. Again, as someone who has two kids of my own, the boundaries, again, we are doing this for our children. Uh, again, these are things I've learned the hard way over the last six, seven years, getting those things set up that you've just, again, just given that value and again, the truth. So I, that was really like just honest and raw. And I really, really mm -hmm. appreciate that. Again, thank you, Jesse, so much for your time today. Uh, take care. Thanks.